in the time of pandemic and the people stayed home and they read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played games and learned new ways of being and were still. And they listened more deeply. Some meditated, some prayed, some danced, and some met their shadows. And the people began to think differently. And the people healed. And in the absence of people living in ignorant, dangerous, mindless, and heartless ways, the earth began to heal. And when the danger passed and the people joined together again, they grieved their losses and made new choices and dreamed new images and created new ways to live and heal the earth fully as they had been healed. To those who have left footprints on the midnight sidewalks, time has stopped for many, but not for some. Time has stopped for us who have a home, for those who have paper towels in the cupboard, for those who have peace of bleeding earth. Time has stopped for us who can only know how to travel by plane, for those who can stay behind a blue-green glowing screen, for those who can bring a plant indoors and call it a garden. Time has stopped for us who don't know the winding hospital corridors, the pace of footsteps necessary to leap over the crack that determines breath. Time has stopped for us who don't need to lock the door behind us every morning, questions dirt under our fingernails. Time has stopped for us who don't feel bone-weary, bone-aching, bone-breaking exhaustion that comes from holding the whole world on our shoulders. Time goes on. Time continues. And we are grateful to and in debt to and owe all of ourselves to the royalty whose hands turn red from cleaning each shopping cart to the kings and queens who leave with the breaking of the sky and return with it clicking shut. To those who are essential. To those who keep running and upholding and working when our government have failed them. Mixing essential with sacrificial over and over and over again. To those who love love beyond anything we had known before, whose love is strong enough to keep us home, is fast enough to keep us moving forward, is close enough to keep us bound together with care, so tight that a knife couldn't cut through it. Thank you. Dear Earth, flowers have blossomed and the weather has changed, but why doesn't it feel like it? Lonely. This is the word to describe the fact of this unfortunate event that has occurred over the past few weeks. The whole world is asleep and it is so quiet that the sun is bored of chasing the clouds. Usually, quiet means peaceful, peaceful. but in this time of fear and anxiety, it's quite the opposite. How does it feel like knowing that this toxic is slowly passing through the earth, infecting your people and damaging you, the earth, which was once an extraordinary environment. We now live in an unknown world, uncertain of ever going back to school, uncertain of meeting my friends again, uncertain of going to my family holiday in summer, uncertain of everything happening in the world. When I wake and sit in the morning silence, I take my moment to breathe. I've forgotten how to breathe before this silence. I've spent years holding my breath whilst running to keep up. I've not stopped running 
moving through the world without looking, taking from the world what I need to get through, getting lost in a future that's yet to come, confused by the chaos. Stop. I breathe. I forgot the direction I was going in when I began. I breathe again. There is time to stop, to think, to listen. I feel the stillness returning and I see the world once more. A world that's been ignored. I will never forget how to breathe again. Love letter to breath. Tingling. There's always tingling when lovers meet. Here, between my upper lip and nostrils. And now my chin. Like the excavation of a dimple. And my right eyebrow, of all things. I am aware of how much my nostrils flare. About the size of pound coins. It doesn't bother me. Everything opens. My throat. The space of the heart. Those exquisitely fine vertebrae where the back of the neck meets the base of the skull. My lower back. My belly. Down. Down through my legs and into the earth. And back again. You endow me with love for the whole wide world. How precious you are. Breath. What do you want to leave behind? Alyssa from Aotearoa, New Zealand. Always in a rush, I am a highly strung worry warrior with the background anxiety levels of Trump's hair on a windy day. So one of the unexpected upsides of lockdown is that it forced me to slow the fuck down and ask, what do you want to be when this is all over? When the field of our experience narrows, it brings into sharp focus the type of person we are. Are you a keep calm and carry honour? Or an awake at 3am catastrophizer? A buy what you need it? Or a toilet paper hoarder? I see just how much of my energy is devoted to worrying about the future. My head reads like a stock exchange ticker of the world's woes. Pandemic. Climate change. Biodiversity collapse. What will happen to the Navarro cheer team now Daytona is cancelled? This time is my opportunity to become less of a small stuff sweater and more of a present moment dweller. What do we want to leave behind? And what do we want to take with us into this brave new world we'll have to create? Easter Sunday, 2020. Dear Mother, I'm writing to you in the garden. We're all locked down and I'm sitting in it. This is what I'm doing today. Listening to three priests on the radio, talking about the resurrection and laughing, to the children beyond the fence, playing next door, laughing too. Above me, a branch bounces. Two blue tits are on the branch. The branch is spindle thin, but does not snap. The leaves on the branch are emerald green. Newborn, they flutter. The blue tits zoom away on invisible roller coasters. A white flower spins out of a bush, twirling. The white flower is a butterfly. A cabbage white, is it? It's actually cream and eggshell blue with black dots. Normally, I wouldn't notice a cabbage white or wonder why it's called that. Today, I do. Wonder. Three swans honk overhead, out of the blue bass notes. And my love, my wife, is painting green boards. Wish, 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 she goes. Three wishes. Now I hear a tiny whir, whir above my head. 
How hard it is to write down your sounds, dear mother, make them into words. This might be the end of everything, of everything we've ever known. It might be the end of days. You know, mother, only you know. A crack of thunder happens just at that moment as I write in the garden and my wife paints and the sky crackles, then echoes like an empty hall. Is this the end, mother? I'm sorry, I've been asking this so often. I'm sorry it has taken all this for us to hear, to say, forgive us, mother. And after the thunder, a billow and whoosh of leaves blows into our eyes, my wife and I, and all we can do is close our eyes and wait till the whoosh is gone and the dust settles. Who knows if it will? And if it does, what will remain? But at least I wondered and heard the robins whir, the swans honk, the bounce of the blue tits. At least I marvelled at my wife's wish, wish, wishing. I marvelled at my wife and my children and my grandchildren and the children next door laughing like bells in the morning. A splash of rain drops on my hand, my face, my book, like light. Be well, be happy. There's this quiet whisper in my heart. Be well, be happy. I only hear it late at night, breathing out in this newfound familiar strangeness. Or I hear it as I end a Skype or a Zoom or a FaceTime with a stab of missing the person I've only just seen and heard, not touched. Or watching the news, which is hard to turn off. Be well, be happy. Far-flung friends and family, once-met workmates, long-lost loves, nurses, with only a plastic apron between them and their fevered patients. Be well, be happy. I hear it in the chirping of the sparrows, the throaty call of the wood pigeon, the starling's love song at dusk, and the buzzing of the bee in the hibiscus, noisy in this much-silenced, used-to-be-bustling city. Be well, be happy, as we learn all these clunky terms, shielding, social distancing, self-isolating, lockdown. They sound like words of war in times of peace. COVID-19 isn't the enemy. It too simply wants to reproduce itself. Be well, be happy, as the long ago griefs slide back in. Yesterday is today again. Time and space are disorienting tricksters in these four walls, and I wake with tears rolling down my cheeks. Fabulously contagious love like a virus roams from New York to Colorado, from India to continental Europe, returning to Somerset, home, which may as well be a million miles away. Be well. Be happy as the day breaks in this most heart-wrenching of exquisite springs, all is still at first. Then the jolt and sudden remembrance that all is not right. The same jolt is at the start of a new day, after the loss of a love, the love never forgotten. The jolt accommodated in the rings of our tree-like bodies. Be well, be happy as we face the fact of no return to normal. Normal was crisis, normal was inequality, normal was extinction, normal was oppression. But the normal was largely only named by those with no voice at the heart of the suffering. Be well, be happy. And this quiet, sometimes stillness, these voices, their whispers can finally be heard on the newly sweet, blossom-scented city air. Be well, be happy, for hijacked cliches aside, we really are all in this together. As we survive and re-emerge, maybe with greater clarity and more compassion for the preciousness of this breath, 
your breath, mine, and the beating of the earth. We'll catch a glance of the invisible threads holding us together, keeping us alive. Be well. Be happy. It's a whisper in my heart. It's all I've got. There are no loud, confident proclamations, no bells and whistles, no crystal ball reassurances. I keep whispering. Dear lungs everywhere, you are frontline workers. Our animal bodies wide and blurry borders with the world. Your webwork is perhaps our most permeable surface, wet like a coast or a subterranean cave system. In each inhalation, you gather from our planet's sea of gases the vital yet invisible elements of our survival, transforming air into self. Without you, we would only last minutes. And with each press, in and out, you uphold a life in constant dialogue with its surroundings. Yet the heart always steals the show. That close colleague's beat is understood as the sole rhythm driving our being. Dear lungs, you are not forgotten. We need you always, but especially now that we are threatened together. Dear lungs, my lungs, it feels like we're making progress. The restrictions have strangely released you. With the privilege of my working from home, we have time to run. When I am unrun fit, it takes the first kilometre or two to overcome the sharp, seizing, wheezing gasps as you, half-closed, are forced into deep, rib-stretching breaths. But now, three weeks in, the pain is gone. You feel fuller, and the air of quietened London has lost its taste of sulphur, its slight colour of grease. In the parks, the pores of the leaves wink wider, a galaxy of stomata with their throats open to the spring. The breathing of this small suburb has deepened. Breathing space is enforced upon some, but elsewhere, never far, lungs are fighting, tightening, their linings invaded, inflamed and furious, self-mutilating. They are drowning, infected, mechanically supported, some failing. Dear lungs everywhere, I imagine your vast acreages of pain. You could fan each pair of you out to the size of a tennis court. That fact always makes me think of the rainforest, the lungs of our world and its destruction measured in football fields. I think of the thin and quickening gasps, the onset of a panic attack that no one hears unfold in its fullness, 17 floors up. The long sigh after the all-night warehouse shift, sinking back into the seat of an empty bus. The breaking breath of the daughter who cannot go into the ward to say goodbye. When I am stressed, I hold my breath, forgetting to release tension with the simplest and most natural movement, one that should not need to be actively remembered. Reading the news of 1,000 deaths a day, mass graves, military hospitals assembled in car parks, improvised morgues, domestic violence spiking, Parliaments dissolving. I hold my breath. I think of breath quickening, thinning, halting. I think of breath grasping, faltering, stopping. I think of breath deepening, slowing, easing. In the silent flat, he paces pushing his knuckles between his tight lips. Each human life begins and ends with a breath. The two brackets curve around each of us, 
like a parenthesis, a story. Dear lungs everywhere, thank you.